Hello. Good morning, everyone. Magandang umaga. Selamat pagi. Arun Sustay Saibadi. And good morning in all the languages that I cannot, um, that I do not know as of yet. Welcome to the CBNE Forum this October 2021. And the theme for this um, forum is a season of learning. Thank you for joining us today as we deepen our capacity building to further enhance the skill and knowledge of CBNEs, as we facilitate creative thinking and strategic partnerships to facilitate CBNE resilience and expand the knowledge and networking of CBNEs on market mechanisms. My Ngayon name is natin ang, uh, Guerrero. Um, uh, I believe we have some um, te technical issues with the interpretation, but those will be fixed soon. So again, my name is Chrissy Guerrero. I will be moderating this opening program. I am from NTFP EP Asia, one of the co-organizers of this event. And I take the opportunity to thank all of you coming from more than 10 countries, I believe, because some of you are coming from other outside ASEAN, and also, others are coming. Joining us from Africa and from elsewhere. Okay, I think. Hold on. Um, we'll just fix interpretation. 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 Um, we'll Um, we have. We can hear the the Nepal interpreter here in the main floor. Could you kindly? Okay, there, there. All right. Thank you very much. So once again, Chrissy Guerrero from NTFPEP Asia, one of the co-organizers of this event, and I take the opportunity to thank you all for joining us despite your busy schedule. I thank you on behalf of all the other co-organizers, the FAO Forest Farm Facility, including the, Insti the International Institute for Environment and Development, IUCN and AgriCord, the Asian Farmers Association, the Green Livelihoods Alliance, the Regional Community Forestry Training Center or RECOFT, the International Forestry Students Association or IFSA, and the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, ACB. We are excited to learn together with you in these two days. For those who are just joining um, and are not familiar with the interpretation, please know that we have six languages uh, for today. For those wanting to listen in the Lao language, uh, please look for Spanish, as we are not as we have exceeded the limit in the number of languages that we can rename. For those who have questions, please use the chat box and we will get to them. And if though if you have technical questions, please re, please uh, type to NTFP technical for any technical concerns. So the next slide, please. Yes. So there's the chat feature in the lower middle, and also you may refer to NTFP technical for any um, needs that you may have. Okay, good morning to all as well that are typing in the chat box. So <clears throat> to, to begin this forum, we are pleased to have a distinguished panel to deliver our keynote messages for our forum. Um, we have our first uh, speaker, Mr. Justin Pauls. Mr. Justin Pauls is the Chief Executive Officer of the Adimalai Pazanagudinyar Producer Company Limited, and he will forgive me for my pronunciation. This producer company has been initiated to anchor livelihoods of indigenous communities by encouraging traditional organic farming, handicrafts, livestock rearing, sustainable harvest of forest produce such as honey, amla fruit, soap nuts, berries, among other NTFPs supporting the well-being of the landscape as well as value addition of harvests and trading. This company is wholly owned by over 1,600 individuals from indigenous communities 
and is what the first of its kind at the national level in India. They are located in the Western Ghats in the Nilgiris Biosphere Reserve in Tamil Nadu, India. They were registered in April 2013, and Adimalaya recently won the United Nations Equator Prize, recogni recognizing community efforts to reduce poverty through conservation and sustainable use of we invite everyone to please mute so that we can listen to the speakers. Thank you very much. We welcome Justin from India. We welcome you for your keynote message. A very good morning uh, to everyone here. Uh, so yes, I'm, I'm Justin and uh, I'm from uh, Adimale Parangudi Nerd Producer Company Limited. As uh, Chrissy told you, it, it is from uh, the southern part of India. So <clears throat> I'm also here to uh, share you uh, about our experience of how we started and uh, how we are going and uh, what are all our uh, long-term goals would be. Um, so this was in the early 90s uh, when Keystone Foundation, uh, an NGO, uh, came into the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. And uh, they met the indigenous communities and uh, they found out the indigenous communities were involved in NTFP collection and uh, farming for their livelihoods you know, for centuries. But there has always been a need uh, to provide a fair price and uh, you, know, you, need, you need to eliminate the market fluctuation. And uh, more importantly, uh, there is this um, exploitative trade by the medieval, which is also supposed to be eliminated. So. The first step was to uh, set up resource centers uh, in the villages. So we uh, did not want the community people to go to the town for work. So that was one uh, important thing because it's not that easy for them and it is not so accessible for them to go to the town. So we set up the village uh, production centers in the villages so that you know, work could happen over there. And the other thing was to give them better returns for the produce, because uh, that was also not uh, available to them because it was all exploited to trade that was happening. And uh, one more important thing was about the quality, uh, the eco-friendliness and the factory pricing that we always uh, uh, put pressure on. So that was uh, another important thing. So, so that is how we start. And uh, the value addition process is start, uh, starting with honey and bees back. And uh, when it started gaining strength, it was felt that all the value addition activities must be brought under a single umbrella. Because once we started, it was in one single village. And uh, one example I could tell you was uh, the people were, you know, packing honey in beer bottles and uh, you know, plastic bottles that were found in the garbage boxes. They used to clean it and then they used to pack it and they used to sell it in the roadside. So that was something that we wanted to avoid in that was avoided by setting up the village centers and there are more production centers coming up. So we wanted to bring it all under a single umbrella. So, so that it is under the control of the tribal community, the region, and was also felt as an imperative. So a meeting was held and the community members uh, with different options and opinions came up. And then uh, they came up with an idea of forming it into a company. And then a board of directors were elected and you know, it was start with 15 members. So as of now, uh, the membership has increased to around 1,609 uh, shareholders um, with seven board of directors. And uh, we are uh, working with around uh, 3,500 uh, families in the whole of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, uh, getting to around uh, 147 villages. So that is how it all started. And uh, the important thing over here is uh, we did not want any, you know, modern uh, implementations to happen over here. So, so we just kept documenting the community's management system because it has always been there and we did not want to disrupt it. And uh, so that was done by evaluating the potentials to sustainability. And then we also started incorporating new approaches with the traditional knowledge and uh, a sustainable management plan to sustainable harvest. And then there was a lot of implementation and uh, monitoring that was um, happening. And this helped 
promote community participation uh, through adaptive management i would say and then as i said you know integrating local and scientific knowledge has always been the key to success uh, for a community based enterprise and uh, considering the NP entire npfp and system uh, including its economical social political and uh, ecological aspects and there's always been uh, something that we uh, keep telling is sustainably use the scarce raw materials because the indigenous communities are the ones who got the forest and uh, i think using the entire resources from the forest is, is not uh, very good so they're also aware of it and as per their culture it's not uh, you know like you just go in and scrape off all the resources from the forest so they are aware of it so through a community enterprise ang uh, nagsasalita ngayon ay ang uh, speaker galing sa ing so through the uh, community enterprise we were able to regulate that so we were able to liaison between the uh, indigenous community people and uh, the forest officials as well so this has given them uh, a proper channel and uh, a proper way to uh, bring up the uh, for the community because uh, before adimalai's intervention uh, you know the people were not uh, given a proper employment you know they were not even having uh, employment for for almost the whole month they used to have maybe five or six days and then the remaining days they would sit idle at home so after adimalai had come you know they are able to have uh, employment for almost the whole year because the season in the forest is all around here very good way and uh, another important thing about uh, community based enterprises capacity building not only to the staff who working in, uh, in the company but also for the people who collect the products from the forest uh, because we keep telling them about the quality and then uh, how it can be value added so that you can give them a better return So, so that is something that uh, a community based enterprise can stress on and can bring in better inputs for the farmers as well and uh, uh, another uh, biggest thing that you can work on with a community based enterprise is the producer gets to fix the price it's not the price that is in the market but it is the price that you tell because it's it's us who are collecting the produce so we know what value it is because people are collecting honey from you know more than 500 600 feet high cliff you know so you need to fix the price so that works with the community based enterprise that is seen nowhere else but in the enterprise because here you got the liberty uh, to talk to the management you also know how to analyze the price in the market and then you finally fix the price so at the end of the day it's the producer who's getting benefit and uh, even if the market is having a problem the enterprise will take care of it it can you know buy any amount of produce from the company so, so this make sure that the producer always is in the safer side so that is one big uh, impact that a uh, uh, community based enterprise can do and uh, mm -hmm. another uh, important thing is about autonomy that happens uh, through uh, an enterprise because you know, the people decide on everything it's not only about the pricing factor but also on the other factors of employment because here uh, we've got more than 60 women who are working on uh, the produce so we make uh, honey millets you know and some produce that were considered nothing actually yeah yeah so we utilized to make uh, cosmetic products like lip balms balms and soaps that is giving employment to more than 30 women over here um and an entire village here is working on uh, beeswax products alone so we started uh, with you know like i don't know probably 150 soaps a month initially and now we are making more than 20000 soaps a month in one production center so when you go to the other production centers the numbers go up so almost uh, 50% of the profit goes back to the community uh, at the end of the financial year if the company is making a uh, good profit so i think that is also something that uh, an enterprise can work on because you give them the profit when you buy the produce and at the end of the financial year you give them back the profit that the company is making so that is one good thing that doesn't happen with any other company so i think more and more community based enterprises 
will benefit more uh, of the indigenous community people because that is, I think, the need of the art uh, because traditional techniques is something that is being still used by the community. So how are you going to benefit them is still always a question mark. So Justin? it takes a lot of, yeah. We're almost out of time. If you would okay. like to so wrap up, and then I, I will try to play your video after this. Great. Yes. So, yeah. So, as I said, uh, it is very important uh, for the community people to set up uh, an enterprise which can channelize uh, their income. So, that is what I want to finish on a closing note. So, I think that the video will also give you a glimpse of what Adimala is doing and how we won the uh, Ecuador Prize uh, from the UND. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Justin for that introduction. Um, the video is just fresh, so I will try to share it myself from my screen. Um, oh, hold on. <laughs> Let's hope it will work. Sorry, I will try it again. It is just sent this morning. Sorry. Almost there. Do you have it on your screen now? Does everybody have it on their screen? Yes, Chrissy. Great. Can you hear the sound? Good, yep. All good. La gestion de forêt exige une forte implication des populations autochtones. Tropical Forest, dans ses interventions, considère ces communautés locales et autochtones comme étant un pilier important pour la valorisation des espaces là où ils habitent. Je fais dans le, le cacao culture. Mon champ est devenu champ école par rapport à la certification Rainforest. Moi, je suis une femme qui, qui apprend aux enfants dans ce champ école ce que c'est l'agroforêt. Nous formons euh, les jeunes. OK, it seems... Um... There's been a, uh, there's an issue with the, the video. Maybe um, uh, Robin can share the other video while we're... Um... Thank you for the inspiring message, um, Justin, and the short film that um, that uh, was shared by my uh, colleague Robin. 
As you've heard from him, they started from 15 people from a few soaps and now they're um, exporting and they're trading all over the country. So um, without further ado, we would like to introduce our uh, next speaker. Our next speaker is coming from Vietnam. Miss Lisa Huyen is the CEO of the Vietnam Star Aniseed Cassia Manufacturing and Exporting Joint Stock Company, or Vinasamex, the leading enterprise in cinnamon and star anise manufacturing and exporting in Vietnam. Lisa is working with passion to further improve the living and working condition of every single farmer and minority people in farming in the farming area all over Vietnam. After contributing more than nine years being a CEO of the leading Vietnamese company, Lisa has successfully achieved valuable certificates for Vinasa Max JSC, such as Organic EU, Organic JAS from Control Union Netherlands, USDA Organic Korea for Life from EcoCert and HACCP from QuaCert, BRC ISO 9001 to 2015. And what makes it interesting is she is also part partnering with farmers in implementing the participatory guarantee system, which is one of the themes we will be discussing in this forum. Ms. Lisa Huyen, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much, Ms. Mila. Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. First of all, I would like to send my warm thanks to all organizers, speakers, and all participants of this event today. And I hope uh, all of you will be safe from COVID-19. Uh, my name is Lisa, uh, Director of Vina Summit from uh, um, Vietnam, and we are leading company in manufacturing and exporting uh, cinnamon and uh, uh, star anise and other style from Vietnam. And uh, today I'm so busy to have a chance to uh, be here to share with you about our Vina Summit with our value chain in Vietnam, as well as uh, up uh, applying um, uh, PGS uh, into our value chain. So can you help me to share uh, my presentation? เอ่อเวทนามาถ้ามองว่าตบายใช่ไหมอันนี้ไว้กว่าสบายปล่อยตบายที่นั่นสามชั่วเยสโอเคแคนยูเน็กซ์ไลท์เอ่อเอ่อ
uh, we know some makes uh, realize uh, Vietnam's NTFP have a lot of potential, but have not been properly invested, produced, and imported to increase the values of product. And uh, non tiber forest products play an active role in economic development, improves household uh, livelihood livelihood, raising the values of forest trees production and supporting sustainable forest management. Uh, we also see the chance in the uh, NTFP market. Tillman Anis is also typical NTFP of the northern mountainous province in Vietnam. And the niche market has many opportunities for, for business, especially towards exporting into high end market. Vietnam NTFP are exported to about 90 countries. In 2018, NTFP export continued to achieve positive results. We turned over a 480 million US dollar, and this was an increase of 2.47 times compared to that of 2015. And Vietnam make business model to uh, is to good nature. We protect the environment, limit the use of pesticides, chemical fertilizers, protect the soil and water environment, and prevent climate change. And as I mentioned, we are one of the uh, members of EEBT. So we have uh, uh, seven principles of sustainable development in our value chain. So we also make create value for society, contribute to property, alleviation and multi us and tonic minority promote, um, promote gender equality. Next slide, please. And uh, so when we are uh, equal to US, uh, Europe, uh, Japan and Korea, so of course, we need to apply for international certification. Uh, and it is so lucky because we missed a uh, uh, mid uh, Yvonne from uh, the forest and farm facility in Vietnam. Uh, she connects us with a farmer in Yen Bai province uh, to make value chain with a farmer for cinnamon uh, um, material. And we apply for organic certification for this area. And uh, we have uh, also uh, applied for PGS into our system because we, we hope we can do it. Family is a lack of citizen, but only no good story. Well, upon Saxon, one of my mind, it's not have a third party organization to evaluate. F, uh, evaluate and issue the certification. And the cost of certification assessment is very expensive, and almost the enterprise are not ready for such in Vietnam. And organic certification is considered as, as a, passport, a passport for NTFP as well as for agricultural product for import to market require high quality product. However, because the code is so high, that's why in Vietnam now we can apply for PGS in our system. We still can ensure about traceability. We also can uh, assess and improve our chest transparency for the customer. And for PGS, quality control is carried out by a stakeholder. Is it a bit sim more simple? The customer suppliers farmers and other assessment organization can apply into the system. And the PCS standard is a self-recognized standard among parties to ensure about transparency. Um, and the next slide. Very <laughs> important part I also mentioned with you about PCS in Vietnam when we apply into our value chain. Sorry, Miss Lisa, you're on mute. Yes, okay. Yes, now okay. again, go ahead. And the uh, and ICS, that's mean internal control system officials, PCS group leader in uh, is a local point for regional management and monitoring the uh, household in the group. And group two, PCS infection and supervision group, 
Marketing is usually conducted by team members in mo to moni monitor each other and group treat the customer. Even the customers, they also can assess the traceability system and self-assessment for their shipment, shipments. And group four, PGS Vietnam, we, uh, they can uh, issue the certification when you apply PGS into the value chain and use the QR code for product. And the final part I would like to mention with you when we uh, we come with CBN, uh, how we do and uh, which we hope to receive. Next slide, please. Uh, we hope uh, we can connect with member in CB, uh, CBNE uh, so that we can create more a growing community. And we also hope we can share experience as well as knowledge of our farming and production in Vietnam by applying PGS as well as sustainable development green chip into our value chain. Uh, we also uh, hope uh, our business development can make in the future by training and supporting organic farming for farmer is a system and it depends on the material area to meet the market de demand. Uh, in the fact that in Vietnam, we have uh, so many actions to support the farmer because they take responsibility and the important role in our value chain. Because if we want to ensure our qualities, of course, we need to control quality from the beginning. Uh, of the material area. So that's why uh, we often train for farmer at least two times per year. So that we can improve, uh, improve their knowledge because almost they are poor and ethnic, ethnic minority in Vietnam. That's why sometimes we also receive support from the forest and farm facility in Vietnam. Uh, from Ms. Yvonne, they also support us in training the farmer about organic standard or PGS standard or some other international standard. So uh, that's all the information I want to share with you today. I hope uh, my presentation can uh, make you understand more about our companies, about our value chain, and uh, uh, about this PGS in Vietnam. Uh, if you have any questions, please give me. I'm so happy to answer all your questions. Or you also can access my website, vnasamic.com to see more information uh, from our company. Uh, thank you so much and thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lee Seng Huyen. It was a very um, exciting presentation. We hope that um, the farmers from VNFU working with, with Ms. Voan and also others, other farmers in Asia, in Vietnam and elsewhere can also meet with uh, responsible business like you. And we look forward to hearing more about your coordination with farmers. Thank you for being with us today. Our third keynote speaker is, um, we have um, Ms. Magdalena. Jovanovic. She is a forestry student at the University of Belgrade in, in Serbia. She has served as the International Forestry, forestry Students Association Head of the European Forest Institute Subcommission from 2020 to 2021. Now Magdalena is the IFSA president where she represents forestry students and related fields from all over the world in decision-making processes. Let us listen to her message. Hello everyone, my name is Magdalena Ivanovic, the president of IFSA, International Forestry Student Association, which is the largest international network of students in forestry and related sciences. And in IFSA, we seek to create global cooperation among students in forest and in the sector in general to broaden knowledge and understanding as well as space for youth in international forest processes to achieve a sustainable future for our forests. IFSA strives to connect its members with their peers and also with forest-related organizations and policy platforms. Currently, we operate in over 60 countries, therefore uniting thousands of students in their endeavor to learn about forests, cultures, and the environment. IFSA has a vision of a world that appreciates forests which describes the dream of having all people and societies on earth recognize the full worth of forests and fully understand 
forests grasping their implications and being grateful for their multifold contributions to humanity. Appreciating forests not only for timber, but also for their provisions of natural beauty, shade, water purification, habitat, biodiversity, and the topic of this forum, which is non-timber forest products. Non-timber forest products are any products um, other than timber, which are naturally produced in the forest. However, non-timber forest products often have a very hidden role in global economy. These products are harvested by communities all over the world and are used as food, as fuel, as medicine, um, as construction material, and, and they have many more uses. Around 1.3 billion people depend on these products, which are a contribution to their livelihoods as well as their income. However, despite their very significant non-cash benefits, their importance, especially in rural areas, has been widely underestimated. So the question is, where does youth come in all of this? As a student organization, education is of extreme importance to us. We recognize the importance of non-timber forest products and the lack of formal education surrounding their role in communities and communities' dependence on this product. I believe that as, a, as students and as youth, our voices will be crucial in improving forestry education and also bringing light to these topics. As if so, we have already been involved in many projects which were centered around forestry education in an attempt to breach the gaps left behind by formal education programs. Our voice has been widely appreciated when it comes to changes that need to be made and we will continue to be engaged in these discussions that are so relevant to us as a student organization. As IFSA, we use our ability to enrich members' education on topics like these through international events, networking and intercultural exchange. Through forums like this, we are able to share our opinions and highlight our importance in these discussions, but at the same time, we are providing space for our members to learn. We use these opportunities to provide our members a chance to get involved in discussions that are not widely covered. As I mentioned earlier, we also strive to connect our members to forest-related organizations. And this forum is only the first step in connecting to community-based non-timber forest product enterprises. And IFSA members have already been collaborating with many organizations, providing their very valuable input. And I hope that this will be possible uh, to establish with community-based non-timber forest product enterprises as well. I believe this will be a stepping stone in making sure that new generations are aware of how people use forest resources, also in helping to improve the contribution these resources make to community well-being and the work that these enterprises are doing on stimulating income generation for indigenous and rural communities. Non-timber forest products that can be sustainably harvested from a forest create an alternative source of income and they promote the long-term survival of forests and the communities who depend on them. Therefore, getting to know the work of community-based non-timber forest product enterprises on conservation of natural resources through forest protection and sustainable harvest practices would be extremely beneficial to students in expanding their knowledge. With that, I would like to thank you for inviting me to give this speech and for enabling youth to share their voice on important issues. We are also thankful to have the opportunity to organize a parallel session on youth encounter with community-based non-timber forest product enterprises, which I hope will shed some light on youth involvement in these um, in these discussions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Magdalena. So there you have it. We have key messages from the community producer sector, from the company's private sector, as well as from the youth. Um, so yes, please do tune into their parallel session tomorrow morning. 
So we are about 20 minutes behind schedule, but we will try to speed things up as we go along. Um, so welcome, and for those who are just joining us, um, please find your interpretation. And um, thank you for joining us. We have now eight countries from ASEAN here. We have uh, those from Africa and from Europe. So now we're present from three continents. Um, it's lovely to have all of you. And uh, we hope that you continue to enjoy our sessions and contribute to the sharing. So just to briefly share for our schedule today, if we can have the, um, yeah. So today we have three sessions. Right after I finish uh, with the, these slides, we will start with the ca capacity building with application session where we will, then that will go on for um, until the early afternoon. We will have time for CBNEs to engage directly with professors and with students in marketing and communications in, in, the, in the local language as well, but they will, we will first hear from these three speakers. After that session, in the afternoon, we will have the presentations of um, seven hackathon groups who are solving problems that face CBNEs. They are coming from six different countries and have been already after two months to share the solutions of their for their problems and they will be judged and those with the best solutions have a chance to win a prize. And finally, um, we have <clears throat> one more um, parallel event. And for this parallel event, we will be sharing the link and the links have also been shared in the email, um, but we will be sharing the link in the chat for this parallel session on climate proofing business. So uh, please join us for these three sessions. And so as to maximize the day, we will now continue with our capacity building session.